Awesome. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, really appreciate your time. Uh, you're spending time with us to not only learn, um, you know, about dream.org, but as well as our scholarship fund and how climate tech can help you ascend in your careers. Yeah, my name is Alejandra Castillo. I go by Alex. I'm the Senior Associate of Career Pathways for the Tech and Innovation team at dream.org. I will be getting us started today by going over our agenda. Next slide, please. So here we are at the introduction and agenda review, uh, but soon after we'll be going into our session objectives, mission, and the history of how the tech program came to be. We will have some of our tech team members say hello, get to know them a little during introductions. Then we will be getting into the scholarship portion of the presentation, which includes an overview, a highlight of the benefits, definitions of climate tech and what the IRA is, eligibility, qualities, and what we look for in an application. Right after, you will all hear from one of our very own scholarship recipients, Anton Park Sr., who was awarded last cycle and will share some of his story, goals, and tips for a strong application. I'll then be spending some time reviewing the timeline and highlighting some of our resources. We will then hear from Emmanuel, who will take us into highlighting career pathways and two of our featured Tech Accelerator partners to whom you can apply the scholarship towards. Emmanuel will then introduce one of our many special guests today, Tara Dotdu's co-founder and creator of the Learning for Action program, Kamal Kapteria. You won't want to miss hearing about one of our partners, Clean Tech Accelerators. We really appreciate your time today, Kamal. Thank you so much for sharing. We will then have our third and final guest speaker, Yuri, our national organizer, spotlight organizing opportunities like the Justice Next cohort within dream.org. Then the grand finale was some time for Q&A. We wanna ensure we clarify or answer anything you may have for us. So don't forget to write down your questions as we will have time in the end for your answers. Now, please be sure that you are muted and we encourage having your camera on if possible. All right, let's get into it. Next slide, please. Now, the objectives today are really to get to know more about the scholarship fund, its benefits, and if you are eligible. We will also review important dates and focus on the tips for submitting an application that stand out among others. Next slide, please. Now, our tech and innovation team's mission is to break down barriers and provide underrepresented communities with opportunities, trainings, and tools they need to become trailblazers in evolving sectors like tech and climate. We are striving to establish diverse talent that will transform these sectors, fostering a culture of innovation, equity, and sustainability. We want to be able to see ourselves as black and brown individuals being represented in these sectors. Next slide, please. Here's a little bit of background on tech and how we came to be. We were founded in 2014 after the Trayvon Martin murder. Our founders, Van Jones and the legendary Prince were having a conversation when Prince asked, why is it that when a black man wears a hoodie, he's considered a thug, but when a white man wears a hoodie, he's considered a tech genius? Well, because of racism was the obvious answer, right? But Prince responded to Van, yeah, but it's also on us that we haven't produced enough black Mark Zuckerbergs. So Van got to work in creating our first iteration and now we are the tech and innovation team at dream.org. Next slide, please. Now, who is behind making these opportunities happen for our communities? That would start with Kashif Wizard, who is our national director, AKA our fearless leader. Then we have Michael Bernarding, who is our senior manager of tech entrepreneurship and Steven Johnson, who is our special projects manager and legit data wizard. Now you guys know me already, so I'll go ahead and pass it over to Tasha and Emmanuel to introduce themselves. Tasha? Hi, everyone. I am Tasha Lawrence, and I am the Special Projects and Operation Manager. I um, actually have a, my hand in a little of everything, budgeting, um, I assist with scholarships, anytime anyone need any help in all special projects. So it's time, so you, since you become an alumni, that you may hear from me. So make sure you answer those surveys that you that we send you and let us know what goes on in your life once you get us upskilling. And my next, I will pass it over to Emmanuel. 
Hey guys, my name is Emmanuel. I'm the digital campaigner here working on the, uh, I work with the tech team, but I also work with the engagement team at dream.org. A lot of the digital communications that you'll see, whether it be emails or text, uh, come from me. Um, and I, I also have my hand in developing some of the, some of these, uh, initiatives and, uh, additional support, um, uh, systems, uh, for our alumni after they receive our, our scholarships or undergo one of our programs. So, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, joining us today and, and being here and um, your interest in our scholarship. Awesome. Thank you, Em. So let's get into the scholarship portion of the hour and provide an overview of it and point out some of the benefits. So the Dream.org Climate's Tech Career Pathway Scholarship Fund was made to empower untapped talent to enter the climate and sustainability landscape with a focus on climate tech. This includes many sectors like energy, manufacturing, agriculture, transportation, and infrastructure. It can range from positions like renewable energy technicians to carbon accountants and clean car engineers to green building professionals. We are aiming to elevate people from diverse backgrounds, positioning them to open more doors of opportunity and shaping a more inclusive future while also working to reduce negative environmental impacts. Next slide, please. So what are the benefits of taking advantage of this opportunity? It's free money. If awarded, we are providing $3,500 to help you boost your career. That's $3,500. That could help you win, uh, that could help you with a couple of courses of certifications, not just one. If awarded, you complete your course or certification. You now have a specific skill set that sets you apart from others. It allows you to keep advancing in your career and shows you you are striving for more. This opportunity is here to help industries be more diverse and inclusive. We want to make sure you are represented and inspired, but also help represent and inspire the next generation. It inspires black and brown communities to say, if they can do it, I can do it too. Once you're a dreamer, you're always a dreamer. You will be a part of our extended family where we will provide you with continued, continued uh, resources and support. If awarded, and you complete your course for certification, you will open up more high demand industry opportunity, opportunities as well. Next slide, please. Now you may be asking what climate tech is and why is there a big focus on it all of a sudden? So climate tech for this cycle is any tech that focuses on reducing greenhouse gases or addresses the impacts of global warming. So for example, the positions we mentioned earlier, which were renewable energy technicians, carbon accountants, clean car engineers, and green building professionals. The focus on it is due to the big investment the government has enacted within the IRA, the Inflation, Inflation, Inflation Reduction Act. This investment is $369 billion. This is going to infrastructures, which leads to job creation, a demand for these positions, and we have to get ahead of this and upskill ourselves to fill these positions. As they say, you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. So it's always useful to keep learning new skills. Next slide, please. Now the applicants we can support are those in pursuit of qualified climate tech sector certifications, college degree or other uh, within six months of the award, uh, enrolled in a qualified climate tech sector certification, college degree or other, or who has completed a qualified climate tech sector certification, college degree or other in the last year. Next slide, please. Now, what course certification or tra training qualifies? It should be offered by an accredited academic institution, such as a technical training program, community college or four-year university an accredited organization that is acknowledged as best in class. I do wanna note that if you are selected to receive the award, you will need to provide proof of the course, certification or training that you will be taking currently in or have completed. If you are not sure it qualifies, you can always email me to make sure. Next slide, please. Now who's eligible to apply? So anyone over the age of 18, anyone who has a climate tech and sustainability focus who is interested in going into this space or are already in it, but furthering their education. While all are encouraged to apply, priority will be given to underrepresented individuals, particularly members of Black, Latinx, Native American, and Native Alaskan communities. Next slide, please. 
Now, tips for your application. This is vital for your application to stand out. Uh, please do your research, explore various training programs, universities, and climate accelerators. Compare the options and choose the one that best aligns with your career goals and interests. We have a couple listed here that could assist you on your journey. No worries about capturing all this information. We'll be sharing all of what was covered today in a follow-up email. Now for your short answer portion of the application, please be sure to really deep dive into showing your passions for the climate and sustainability sector. Share any strengths and weaknesses as well as any leadership and communication skills about your career journey. Show us your focus. I want to do X and Y in the climate and sustainability sector because Z. Please share your story, journey, and how this scholarship can help you and your community. Think about it. How will you give back? Now you have up to 200 words for your short answer. And I'm going to say this again, this is a very important part of the application, so make it count. Next slide, please. Now, I wanna bring up to the stage one of our special guests. We have Anton Parks, uh, who is a scholarship recipient, and he is going to share his uh, journey as well as any tips to submit a strong application. Anton? Hello, everybody. How, guys, how you guys doing? Um, my name is Anton. Can you hear me? Oh, my name oh, is my name, sir. My name is Anton Park Senior. Um, I heard about Dream.org um, through one of my co um, um, legislative agitators in Ohio, Malika Malaku. She's from ACLU. Um, the scholarship pro program was introduced to me. Uh, because I was doing a lot of work, I had um, a questionable background. A few, about seven years ago, I started um, going to D.C., going to Columbus and fighting for legislation that would change the path of black and brown men who had been previously incarcerated. I was one of the people who worked on a past farm bill that expired in 2018. Um, I worked on the felony reentry laws in Ohio, as well as your stand your ground and your um, self-defense um, laws in Ohio. Um, Malika approached me and she said, Anton, I see you doing a lot of things um, and you don't qualify because of your background uh, for you know, scholarships, stipends, um, and even to be hired in some of these spaces. Um, I did some consulting work for Supreme Court Justice Brenner and Jameson, and they were trying to figure out a way um, where I could be on the even field with them as far as um, a financial path of um, a living wage. Um, so I looked up Dream Corps. It was called Dream Corps at the time. And I saw the story that I, Alex just gave about Trayvon Martin and the late uh, artist formerly known as Prince in the conversation. And so I applied. Um, I applied thinking this is another opportunity that was I was told that I may be able to have. but. Um, I didn't believe that I would get it. So I remember the first conversation I had with Alex um, and uh, Kashif, um, and I was so excited and enthused to take my first cohort. Um, I made it all the way through the process, and then towards the end, something came up where I think it was just better candidates. I don't think it was nothing negative or that my record was too extensive. I think they just had better candidates for that cohort. So I was a little, I was like, yeah, I knew it. I knew at the end I wouldn't make it. And Kashif called me personally on about a 20, 30 minute call. And I love that brother. Um, he, he explained to me, he was so sorry that happened, but he reiterated, we have many opportunities. We have some scholarships coming up, apply, um, put your resume down on what you do and something's going to fall through. Um, it wasn't even two weeks later. Um, I had applied for this scholarship um, and uh, sent in all my information um, and then I got it. Um, and then as soon as I got that scholarship, um, a lot of doors opened up for me. So I was placed on a UN board called HCAN and USCAN. That is people like you and me that has a vote about climate and, and uh, environmental health. Um, it's a very important space. Um, and then I was scholarship as well um, through dream.org. They helped pay for my lead licenses. So I am the owner of Building Blocks Environmental Health. Um, I've been adopted by our Neighborhood Health Association since then. So they gave me 
16 different buildings I can go and teach uh, black and brown people climate, um, lead abatement, um, and a lot of other resources since then I've got um, the opportunity to do since I received the scholarship. Um, me and my son, he's 19, he graduated. He had a Microsoft um, scholarship while he was in high school. And now we both apply for this current scholarship to hopefully take the climate tech class at Harvard. So um, um, I, I just, so first off, I know my voice is a little shaky. I had a long week with some medical issues, but I wasn't gonna miss this for the world. I spent a lot of time going around my community on our social media platform, um, telling people about dream.org. Please um, look it up, do extensive research because this is a space where black and brown men, no matter what your background, if you are ready to get it together, you will be able to do it here. Um, there are more connections than just this scholarship here. And I really do implore you guys to talk to Alex, talk to Kashi, talk to the staff, uh, figure out the pathways to success in the living wage, out of recidivism, out of the poverty mindset. You can do it. I, I, like I said, it was just a couple years ago. I didn't have a GED. I didn't have any certifications, but I had a will. And this was a space where my path was opened up. Um, and like I said, I'm so proud to be able to take a college course with my son dealing with climate tech. Um, so if anybody has any questions, I don't know if we're gonna save that for the uh, last portion of the, of the presentation, but I am very open. Like I said, my health is not the best right now, but I wouldn't miss this for the world. Um, I had to come and speak to you guys and let you know, do not give up as a disabled father, as a, person with a questionable background. Um, I am so proud to be a staple in my community. I've been recognized by my Senate, by the Congress. Um, I do local work with my commission. I got a lot of things going on dealing with um, climate tech to um, empower our community. So again, I won't be too long winded, but I did want to give you guys that brief information and I'm very available if you have any more questions, even after um, this this uh, Zoom. So I will definitely pass it back to Alex. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anton. I really, really appreciate your time. Um, it's really special, um, you know, when you, you're very involved in your community. So really, really appreciate that. If anybody has uh, questions, uh, you know, we're saving them until the end. But um, if, even if you have questions, after the fact, um, this is, uh, we have our slide here up where you can scan and add him on LinkedIn, okay? But really, really appreciate it, Anton. Thank you so much. Now, I wanna go ahead and move on to uh, reviewing our timeline. I wanna make sure everybody knows that next week is the deadline. Uh, so we, uh, basically the deadline is March 8th uh, at midnight. Uh, the selection process begins then, and if you are selected, you will receive an email notification to begin the acceptance process. This is sometime between March and April. Now, the quicker you complete the acceptance process, the quicker you will receive your funds, which is between April and May, okay? Now, let's go on to the next slide. I want to encourage you to not just stop after applying with us, um, but continue looking for other scholarship opportunities. Like the list provided here is great and beneficial. It even breaks it down by categories like such as LGBTQ+, minorities, those with disabilities, and et cetera. It's a great resource. Uh, the more depth you can avoid, trust me, uh, student loans are not fun. Uh, so the more you can avoid uh, in paying back things, do it. Okay. So um, yeah, the, the link is Best Colleges uh, Scholarship. Um, we will definitely provide this in the recap. So no worries about um, jotting everything down, but we'll provide it in the recap. Uh, please stay informed on all things dream.org. Um, follow us on the socials, uh, making sure you're signed up to receive our newsletter. We also have a community Slack where we post opportunities all the time. Now, feel free to contact me with any questions. Uh, they don't have to be specific to the scholarship fund either. Like we wanna be a resource for any of the initiatives you may wanna be a part of. So we're here to help and you we can actually point you in the right direction, okay? So we're here to help. Now, 
We'll be hearing next from our digital organizer, Emmanuel, who will take us into scholarship use cases. Take it away, Em. Hey, Alex, thank you. Um, yeah, so over these next few slides, we're gonna talk about just some different um, examples on how you might use our scholarship to either you know start your climate tech career um, or advance your, your climate tech career. So uh, we understand that a lot of people um, maybe on this call may have a general idea of where they wanna go um, or maybe not have an ideal at all. Um, and so where we would recommend you start um, will want to apply for our scholarship, um, but for the purposes of attending a climate tech accelerator. So there are several of them in our in this space. Um, Kamal, the co-founder um, and chief learning officer of Terra.do, uh, is here, uh, and she'll be uh, speaking uh, about Terra.do. Um, but essentially, these are uh, programs that last anywhere from you know uh, ten to twelve weeks, and they're really meant to kind of explore the landscape of climate tech, uh, climate sustainability, so that you can see what all of your options are uh, and pick a direction that best aligns with you know, your, your particular goals. Um, a lot of the times we see folks use existing skill sets that they've built, um, such as you know, marketing, uh, business development. Um, and so through these accelerators, um, they've been able to figure out a niche within this space uh, that they're able to leverage their existing, their past skill set. Um, just, you know, using it in, in climate and sustainability. Um, so really, it's meant to explore the landscape, the different industries uh, and opportunities available to you within this space. Um, but uh, you can't forget that, you know, there are traditional tech roles within climate uh, tech companies. So, you know, any company, any modern company um, is going to need Websites, they're going to need, you know, depending on what they do, uh, engineers, uh, software engineers, IT engineers, um, data uh, analysts, um, even business development folks. So, you know, there are definitely tech positions within climate and sustainability or climate tech specifically um, that may be more of a traditional tech role um, just for a company that works within this space. Um, so one of the things that we encourage folks to do um, is, you know, take a look at, uh, you know, boot camps, um, you know, IT um, and software engineering, um, because if that is a pathway that you'd like to take uh, into the climate tech space, uh, that is an avenue that's available to you. Um, just for, you know, as far as examples of different roles within this space go, um, so the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, United States Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that solar is going to be one of the fastest growing um, uh, industries uh, over the next decade, uh, between now and 2032. Um, its growth uh, is, I think, uh, several times higher than the thing uh, behind it. I think wind uh, is a close second. But the point is, is that as we make this clean energy transition, um, solar is going to be one of the most accessible um, options to folks, um, and there needs to be uh, there, there there there's sales to be made. Um, and so, to that end, um, a job in solar uh, consulting um, or really solar sales um, is one that uh, our partners at Indeed have seen um, a significant rise in demand for. Uh, with job postings growing up, you know, 113% um, between 2019 and 2022. Um, and so, you know, you can definitely use our scholarship uh, to fund, you know, training within sales strategy, um, renewable energy basics, uh, and client management so that you can uh, communicate uh, effectively, you know, to potential clients what their options are within this space um, and secure those sales. Um, we decided to spotlight this position because it has uh, a really high uh, salary potential here, uh, and our partners at Indeed report uh, an average salary of um, almost $120,000 per year um, with commissions and whatnot. Moving on, um, you know, of course, there's the sales side, but there's also going to be the installation side. So if a technical kind of more hands-on role is something that you might be interested in doing, um, of course, there's going to be 
uh, along with the surge and demand for solar in general, there's going to be a surge uh, for the people who actually have the technical skills to go on a roof and install these platforms. Um, the salary isn't as high as tech sales. Um, the average is about 62,000 uh, as reported by Indeed, but there is a uh, great growth potential here. Um, and actually in one of the resources that we'll share um, at the end of this call, um, the uh, you'll be able to explore different uh, career paths. So maybe you start here as a technician or installer and you kind of move your way, move your, uh, move up through the ranks to manage the, you know, these projects and the installation of these, um, these solar panels. Um, so there's room for growth, of course, within these roles and our scholarship would support uh, a career path such as this uh, through specific technical certifications that you'll need to acquire before they even let you <laughs> touch these things. Um, and then uh, well, yeah, that's that's all I have. So without further ado, I will pass it over to Kamal, uh, the uh, co-founder and chief learning officer of Terra.do to talk uh, about their program and um, their ama the amazing work that they're doing to pull people um, along for this clean energy transition. Take it away. Thank you so much, Emmanuel, um, and Alex, and the whole Dream.org team. I am really grateful to be here. I am trying to find my slides. Just give me a second to uh, just get it up. Sorry, I don't know why it's uh, moving hard to get them. Sorry. I just have too many tabs open. Just give me a second. No, I totally get that. I had to I had to close all of mine. It makes my computer too slow. Yeah, I, that's it. That's exactly. That's, that's what I just did. I think I think it's going to get a lot easier now. All right, got it. Okay. Um, is everybody able to see my slides? Just all good. Up. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm going to really quickly just cover. Uh, a little bit about Terra and uh, specifically about the course Climate Change Learning for Action. But I really like that you started with solar because actually I wanted to tell you first a little bit about myself. Um, so this is me at the very start of my career in the year 1999. And I actually started my career in solar. And um, I, I, I got very interested in solar because not because I was that concerned about climate change back then, uh, even though it was already a recognized issue, but because I learned that there were 2 billion people in the world who lacked access to grid electricity. And most of them, many of them lived in my own country, which at the time was India. Um, and so I worked for this company called Selco. And what we did was rural electrification with solar in India, Sri Lanka, and Vietnam. And that's a picture of me with some colleagues with a solar panel that uh, I had helped to install. And the reason I start with this story is because for me, um, Climate environment has always been sort of connected with economic development, economic opportunity, and that's really reflected in the work that we are trying to do at Terra.do as well. Um, and sorry, just coming back to solar for a second, it is an incredible growth sector. Uh, just to you know uh, support what Emmanuel just shared, there are so many jobs. I was just at a conference in DC called Building the Clean Energy Workforce of Tomorrow. And there were people from clean energy companies and utilities getting up and saying they just can't find enough people to do the work. Like they're literally unable to do projects because they can't fill positions. So just so you know, there are really tons and tons of jobs now in clean energy. And it's, it's a very good time to be getting into this space, much better than back in 1998 when there wasn't as much interest. But coming back to Terra, uh, we like to say we are the world's largest platform to upskill talent for the green economy. And we have a very lofty mission, which is to get 100 million people working directly on solving climate by 2030. Um, so what we do is we put people through learning programs and connect them to jobs. And we have a lot of sort of, uh, we have hundreds of folks now. Actually, we have a few thousand people who graduated our programs. And these are just some examples of folks who made some interesting transitions. Esther, for example, she was a program manager at Salesforce. She stayed at Salesforce, but she moved into a climate role. Um, Jocelyn actually started up her own company. Uh, Ruja also, Ruju also started her own company. 
Um, so yeah, we have lots and lots of such stories. Um, uh, just some more here. Uh, Supriya changed from a sort of a non-climate company to a climate company. Um, Keisha was at a company called Bandcamp. She switched to a, a, a food-based company called Afresh. Um, and we get really good reviews on our programs. People really like the, the, the education is very, very practical. We have an amazing supportive community of folks, many of whom have actually undergone this transition themselves. And so they are all available to help you and support you uh, as you yourself consider a career transition into climate. Um, we have what we call a, our learning for action model that underlies all of the courses we run. So obviously there's knowledge and skill acquisition and skills development, and this is critical. Um, you need to sort of understand what the work, you, you know, you need to have the skills for the job you're doing, but there's two other things that don't always get talked about, but we think are equally important. One is building emotional resilience, because as you get into climate work, as you are thinking about career transitions, you will be anxious, you will get even more anxious the more you learn about climate. Um, and so we do a lot of work to help folks build emotional resilience. And uh, we also do a lot around careers and community. Uh, we support connections between learners and employers. And we teach a bunch of career enhancing skills, everything from like how to write your CV, how to improve your CV, to how to prepare for a job interview, et cetera. And this is all built into the program that I'm gonna talk about. So this is the course that I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes on, Climate Change Learning for Action. It's a 12 week boot camp, and it builds basic climate skills it, it gives you a very very strong sort of basic climate literacy and you come out with a bunch of like useful skills um so it's founded on our unique educational philosophy uh, we really sort of are kind of at the cutting edge between sustainability education adult professional education and online education it's very much focused on these core sustainability skills um it's very, very practical, like all the assignments are really oriented towards helping you achieve your goals. It's an extremely global program. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it's really grounded in care, emotional well-being and safety, and it's sustained by a very supportive community. And we have a really awesome multimedia platform uh, that we use uh, for this. Um, we have some amazing folks teaching with us. Um, Harish is actually the founder of that solar company that I used to work for. And he subsequently set up a huge nonprofit in India that's focused on bringing sustainable technology to the villages. Uh, we have a bunch of other amazing instructors. These are just a few of them um, who come through. Uh, so just a little bit about more about the program. Uh, there are all kinds of pathways that folks are on in this program. And uh, I should just say that about 30 to 40% of folks are in the tech or interested in the tech space. And this doesn't necessarily mean they are software engineers or engineers. They just sort of broadly are, they either already work in tech industry or they're interested in working in the climate tech industry. So this program heavily caters to folks in climate tech, but it's also much broader than that. And so there's five different types of pathways that folks are on. Uh, and we've kind of designed assignments, et cetera, to uh, for these different pathways. So there are folks who are just looking for jobs. They're gonna, they wanna leave their existing job and work, get a job in climate tech. There's folks who don't necessarily want to leave their job, but they want to apply a climate lens in their existing role. So often people in finance, they may not want to leave their jobs, but they may want to like skill up. There's people who are starting up nonprofits and companies. There's activists and volunteers who may not change their jobs at all, but they're doing things in the evenings, on the weekends. Um, and then there's folks who may want to be applying for like say a graduate school or uh, undergrad, and they just kind of first wanting to get an overview of all things climate before they decide what kind of program they want to apply for. So all these folks are in the program. Um, a little bit about how it's structured. Uh, it's um, a kind of a, we intensively support our learners uh, with skilled instructors. And so there's a skilled instructor. So we, we, we launch cohorts every six weeks. There's a skilled instructor who's in charge of a group in that cohort, 20 to 25 people. So the instructor is kind of a combination of your content, go-to person, but also a little bit of your life coach and career coach. They'll meet with you for one-on-ones. They'll support you with your assignments. They'll they'll direct you to jobs. They'll connect you to other alumni, et cetera. Um, twice a week, we release something called a class. That's content that you go through on your own. Once a week, you'll turn up for a live lab and you get to select the time, the, the kind of time of lab that works for your time, your availability. We have labs running through the day. 
Um, we have a guest talk once a week where you get to interact directly with an expert. There's these five big assignments that you do through the course that are again, very practical and focused on your goals. Um, we have lots of community events. We have a big mentor network of folks who are ready to meet with you one-on-one -on -one based on your interests. Uh, and then we have a bunch of other career supports. We, we run all kinds of career events. We bring in employers, we bring in alumni who've successfully made the transition. We run a career, um, resume workshop, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of broadly the building blocks of the program. There's a bunch of topics. I, you can check this out on the website as well. Uh, and uh, uh, Alex, if you want to share these slides later as well, that, that's that's fine. Um, and uh, yeah, there's um, kind of in terms of what it you takes to get the certificate, there are multiple choice questions embedded in the content. These are not required. These are for your own learning. There's just five big assignments. And these assignments, a couple of them are group assignments. Again, we support you. Uh, in completing these assignments, there's co-working time to come together to do this homework together. It's very, very much about supporting your own career journey. So most people find these assignments very useful. Um, and then there's a bunch of self-reflection on learning. So you kind of make, it becomes apparent to you like what skills you're building. Uh, and then of course, the most important thing is we want to track outcomes for learners. We know folks are looking for jobs. Um, and so this really is our main metric. It's our North Star. Um, and this is just like the big picture of where we are, where I think we're launching our 20th cohort now. We've had 2,400 graduates in three and a half years. Um, actually, we don't have the number of countries here, but I believe we have covered more than 75 countries at this point. Uh, the vast majority of learners are in the US. The second biggest, the two other big regions are Europe and India, but folks come from all over, like um, all across South America, Asia. We get some folks from Africa. Now we have folks coming in from Australia. Um, and uh, this number, 60% transition to climate work within six months, these are folks who are actually looking, the percent of folks based on the folks who are looking for jobs. And I think this number is actually a bit higher for the US because we actually, most of our career support is very US focused. We don't have like capacity to support folks like in every country in the world. And so actually this is a bit of a, this is an average, but the number would be higher for, for US folks. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, you can just email us at this email address, lfa at terra.do. Uh, yeah, and we're just absolutely delighted to partner with dream.org. Uh, and we hope to see some of you in our programs. Thank you, Alex. And thank you, Emmanuel. Back to you. Awesome. We really, really appreciate you being here and sharing that information. We are excited to be partners with you as well. Um, as you know, I'm Tasha, and I work for the tech team. But I want to introduce one of our my, one of our great coworkers. She works for Greenfall, and she's our national organizer. Yuri, Thank over to you. Thank you, Tasha, and the climate tech team again for inviting me. Hello again. My name is Yuri Siddiqui Torres, serving as the Greenfall national organizer here at Dream.org. I currently live in Oakland, California, but I was born and raised in the Bronx. I have 13 years experience as a community organizer. And then previously, um, I held the role as Director of Community Engagement and Policy for Mayor's Towns Administration here in Oakland. So why is organizing important, right? Organizing serves as a crucial tool for community building, fostering enduring and impactful relationships with leaders um, to affect change and empower our communities imperative to equip our leaders with resources and support. This year at Dream, we have great, great opportunities. Um, we have, firstly, our Justice Next cohort that's being sponsored by the MBA Foundation. This cohort will be um, offering advocacy and organizing tools for young adults between the ages of 18 to 24 that are specifically located in the Sacramento County area that has been directly or indirectly impacted by the climate and justice system. So if you know anyone that lives in the Sacramento area, um, or outside area, um, please, please invite them um, to apply. There will be transportation um, available and food available. And we also will be having it at a great historical location in Sacramento. So please share that. And in this cohort, we'll be providing uh, organizing tools and resources, also understanding like legislative policies, social media, digital organizing, and much, much more. Um, but ultimately it's created to empower and equip the next generation of individuals who are impacted by our issues. Um, Alex will be dropping the Calendly for if you know anyone that wants to have a phone interview with me in the chat. Uh, so please, please share, uh, continue sharing that. Also um, at the Green for All table, we are developing our Green for All Federal Advisory Council. 
Uh, this will be focusing predominantly on leadership development, organizing training, advocacy, and will be really, really instrumental for when we lobby. Uh, so that's another advisory council that's currently being developed. If you're interested in that, please reach out. Um, and then in May, we're having our Dream Fellowship. Uh, the primary audience will be in on the West Coast. So if you know anyone on the West Coast that are interested in that, that's also a great organizing opportunity and that will be starting in May. Uh, the, org the Dream Fellowship, sorry, will be in person and virtual. Um, so if you're interested in that, we'll be teaching storytelling, organizing, fundraising, and much, much more. So if any of these opportunities interest you, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, if you know anyone in the Sacramento area that's interested in just this next cohort, the Sacramento Kings are coming to the graduation. So if you know anyone there, please, please share the application uh, or they can reach out through my county and schedule a phone interview as well. Um, thank you so much. And now I'll pass it back to Alex. Awesome. Thank you, Yuri. Wow. The Sacramento Kings will be there. That's awesome. I'm a big basketball person. So, um, yeah, that's that's great. Uh, but yeah, I want to thank you for your time, Yuri. And I really want to say a big thank you um, to all of our guest speakers, you know, Yuri, Kamal, Anton. Uh, that was some great information that you all have shared. So really, really appreciate your time uh, and efforts in, in this space. Now, I uh, want to go ahead and move it over uh, to Q&A. Uh, so just want to let you guys know uh, if you have any questions, you can actually drop it in the chat or you can come off mute. Either way, and we're all available for questions. Uh, whoever you're, qu you're directing your question to, just let them know. Um, and we're here. And go ahead and ask away. Hey, this is this is Darnell here. I got a question about the application. Uh, I, I I did it on my phone, and I can't see if it's confirmed. Would I be better off doing it on a laptop? Uh, honestly, uh, honestly either way. Either way. Um, uh -huh. we we send a confirmation email, and unfortunately, sometimes that does go to spam. So I would be sure to check your spam, and you can always email me, and I can double check it for you as well. All right, I'll check it out. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Yeah, no problem. All right, so I see a question in the chat. Uh, it looks like, hey, uh, thanks for hosting today. Ah, can you tell us more about joining the Slack channel you mentioned at the beginning? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, Emmanuel, can you drop the link to that? Uh, so, you know, we're, we're trying to think of different ways of where, you know, people are... Uh, where it's like easiest to network. Um, so Slack is a big one. Um, so we send newsletters, you know, through email. Um, I'm gonna be very honest, I never really checked my email, uh, my personal one. Um, so I understand that sometimes email can get bogged down, right? Uh, I am actually on top of Slack. Um, that is where I can connect with people a lot quicker. Uh, we, uh, dream.org, like to post uh, different opportunities there. Uh, there's different Slack channels that you can actually join. Um, you know, there's fun ones as well. Um, so uh, anywhere where you can, you know, find your your community, uh, you're welcome to join. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll be dropping that link in the chat. Um, and for example, we just uh, actually posted the Justice Next uh, cohort opportunity in there. Uh, things like that will come up. Um, so it's always a good thing to be in our Slack to see uh, what's going on. Awesome. Let's see. I'm going to scroll back up and see. All right. Are there one or multiple climate tech scholarships offered in a single cycle? Uh, it really depends on the funder. Um, so for Indeed, they... Um, but for this cycle, it is 50 uh, recipients that will be getting the award of 3,500, uh, with 10 of them being exclusively uh, system impacted. Uh, we always want to make sure um, that we um, are pretty inclusive and want to go ahead and, and yeah, award 50, and then 10 out of the 50 are uh, to be system impacted. Um, so yeah, that is for this cycle. Um, we are looking at doing two cycles in a year. Uh, usually. So uh, if you don't get it this time, uh, we'll probably have another cycle in August. 
Awesome. Let me take a look at the chat here. Uh, the tech cohort make a return. Um, so unfortunately, we did move away uh, from, from cohorts, uh, but we have something in the works that's very similar to it. Um, and we hope to hopefully make an announcement maybe later in the year. Uh, I'm still working on it. Um, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, specifically tech cohorts, yeah, we kind of moved away from them. Awesome. Yeah, we do have a quick event survey that we just dropped a link to in the chat. Uh, you know, it's only it's only five questions. Please let us know, you know, how we did, how we can improve. We want to make these a lot better um, and, you know, beneficial to you, to all of y'all. So uh, make sure that you do take that survey. Uh, it's in the chat. All right. Thank you, Bianca. I appreciate it. Awesome. Great. Any other questions? And for Kamal, thank you so much. Uh, I I uh, have been talking to a couple of people that did take your Terra.do uh, Learning for Action program, and they've said nothing but great things. Uh, one of the major things that they said was that if you are not really sure which pathway you want to take, it's it like really helps you find that passion, um, and then it it leads you. Uh, to to finding your pathway. Um, so uh, heard nothing but good things. So if anybody's interested in Terra.do, uh, using the scholarship for it, um, definitely recommend and recommended by uh, previous colleagues as well. Uh, so how many applications are you expecting? Um, so right now we're actually uh, over 200. Um, our goal is to get to 400. Um, we have about a week and a half left, so doing our last push to get as many applications as possible. Awesome. Any other questions? You're welcome to ask questions to Kamal uh, about Terra.do, uh, Yuri about the Justice Next cohort. <laughs> Manual. All right. So our survey is actually seven questions long, not five. <laughs> but thank you so much for anyone that's like filling it out right now. Uh, again, we really want to improve these and make them beneficial. Oh, yeah. Uh, Emmanuel, can you drop the Slack link, please? Thank you. Come yeah, on. the the <laughs> direct link to join our Slack is at the end of the survey. Oh, uh, so if you complete it, you'll get that link. Um, yes. Yeah, so complete the survey, and then you'll get the link to the Slack community. Lots going on in there. Don't want to miss out. Will you be hosting another Zoom meeting to go over all of the information you covered today? I missed the meeting. Gotcha. Uh, no, this is our, our last one for the cycle, uh, but we do record them. Uh, so we will be sending a recap email next week uh, with the recording and then a little bit about what we what we talked about. And then, of, of course, the resources that we uh, mentioned as well. So no worries there. <laughs> Hey, Alex, so I actually have that um, ready. I can drop a link to it, but the follow-up resources in that, it also has oh, um, the last info session too. So um, we had guest speaker Leonard Adler, uh, founder and CEO of uh, Green Jobs Network, um, speak at our very last session. So um, that video is available there. And then all the resources we discussed today, plus some new resources too. Um, it will be, I just realized I dropped the link to the main wiki. So if you click on that link and then scroll down to the resource guide, the scholarship resource guide, you'll find all those things that I just discussed. Uh, and you'll be receiving this in a follow-up email as well. Perfect. Coming in clutch. And um, thank you. <laughs>
Uh, so question uh, looks like, pardon me if I missed it, but what's the acceptance rate? Um, meaning how many like applications we're gonna uh, award? Is that is that what you mean? Uh, if so, that's uh, we're we're doing fifty this cycle. Yeah, it, it just depends on the partner um, and how much you know they provide. Uh, so for for this one, it's uh, fifty uh, scholarship recipients, thirty five hundred dollars each. Appreciate you. All right. Yeah, so please make sure you complete that survey. Um, you'll have the Slack uh, community link at the very end. You'll get that as soon as you complete the survey and join our community. That way you don't miss out on any opportunities. Follow us on the socials, um, dream.org, um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, anything really you can think of, even TikTok. They're, they're actually pretty funny videos. Um, so uh, go ahead and follow us on the socials. Um, and yeah. Let's see, uh, any other questions going once, going twice?